from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Chris Lemieux and I am the Director of the Office of Vocations for the Archdiocese of Toronto. With me at the altar today is Deacon Mike Walsh. Today we continue a week of Daily TV Masses for Vocations. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from the Archdiocese of Toronto. Pope Francis shared that for every vocation there is the need to listen, to discern, and then to live the vocation. These three components were also present at the beginning of Jesus' own mission, when after his time of prayer and struggle in the desert, he visited his synagogue of Nazareth. There he listened to the word, discerned the content of the mission entrusted to him by the Father, and proclaimed that he came to accomplish it today. During this week of Masses for Vocations, we ask each of you in the daily TV Mass community to hold all who are listening, discerning, and living a vocation to the priesthood, diaconate, or religious life in your heart. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we begin our celebration of the Holy Eucharist, let us begin first by acknowledging our sins and preparing ourselves to celebrate these mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who opened wide the gates of the heavenly kingdom to those reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, pour out on your servants an increase of the grace you have bestowed, that having been purged of all sins, they may lack nothing that in your kindness you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it is called, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and others of those from Cilicia and Asia, stood up and argued against Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they secretly instigated some men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people as well as the elders and the scribes. Then they suddenly confronted him, seized him, and brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, this man never stopped saying things against the holy place and the law, for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses had handed on to us. And all who sat in the council looked intently at Stephen, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord. I told 
out of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. And I will meditate on your wondrous works. Graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set your ordinances before me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had fed the crowd from the five loaves, he crossed by lake by walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd had stayed on the other side of the sea, saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not gone into the boat with the disciples but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some of the boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they had found Jesus on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, We must, what must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. It's easy for us to focus our time, our attention, even place our faith in the things before our eyes, the things we're able to see and experience firsthand. It's much more difficult for us to wrap our minds around things which we cannot see, matters that we cannot fully understand and give ourselves instead to things which are clear to our senses right now. These are the things which we have faith and trust are real rather than the things which are beyond us. But it's a distorted way of thinking. Things of the physical realm that we live in currently are more accepted and things of the spiritual realm can easily be written off or dismissed. This is what Jesus is pointing out to the people around him, many of them just happy for the free meal. If we know this bread of life discourse, the beginning of it, We know that when Jesus indicates that he is the bread of life, the true manna from heaven, the real food 
that the faithful are looking for, many walk away. Many ca cannot accept this teaching because it's hard. We also know that Jesus challenges all of his disciples personally, too. Peter, speaking for the disciples, who says, To whom shall we go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. Peter and the others make the decision, hard as it may be, to accept and to stay. This is an act of faith. There's a tension that exists for all of us. We are pulled by the world that we live in and the world that we want to live in, heaven with God. From the time of our baptism throughout our entire lives, we commit and recommit ourselves by faith to our immortal lives in heaven, lives that we share with Jesus himself. Life is an exercise in patience with ourselves, with others, with God, patient with God's plan he is revealing to us, the plan for our lives that is emerging and will reveal bo fully both the meaning and the purpose we have been given in this life. As we celebrate vocations this week, God's universal plan for all of us to be a people united in holiness and a holy way of life and his individual plan for each one of us to be married or to give our lives entirely for God and his church in a religious vocation. I have the honor to share with you a little bit about the vocation of priesthood here today. Not only is this my own vocation, but it is the one that I spend most time reflecting on in my work as a director of vocations for the Archdiocese right now. Every vocation requires faith and an act of trust in the Lord. To enter into something that is a permanent state of our lives requires real listening, real trusting of God, most of us, most often, with the world offering very little to confirm or support us. The tension between the human and spiritual realm that Jesus highlights in today's gospel is a tension that men discerning priesthood face every step of the way. Priesthood as a vocation is one of sacrificial love offered by the man to God and his church. Jesus provides us with not only the essence of discipleship, which we are all called to, but also the essence of the priesthood, which we see priests live out in their daily lives to this very day. Priests place the sacraments at the center of their lives and carry the heart of Jesus with them as they celebrate all these signs of love for God's people whom they serve. They need to have the kind of faith Peter and the other disciples had in order to make Christ present a faith that seeks to understand, even if that faith, faith doesn't fully comprehend. Baptism, Eucharist, the sacrament of the sick, these things carry the power of Christ, more than the humanity of the priest, to the people who receive them. But the man who is a priest needs to constantly seek to configure his character to Jesus's, seeking to resemble Jesus as closely as he can so people recognize Jesus when they meet the priest. The heart of Jesus cannot be limited, though, to the extension of the ministry of sacraments by the priest either. This is why his whole life must be given to sharing the love of Christ with those whom he serves, everyone. And priests extend the mercy of, of God through the sacrament of penance, which means that they need to know God's mercy first and foremost and always, and be generously merciful as Christians themselves. These only begin to touch on the beautiful vocation of priesthood. The difficulty is that there are men called to the priesthood who don't respond because they fear rejection, they fear loneliness in their lives, they fear and can't face their unworthiness to the call. Fear is never from God and is always an obstacle. If you are discerning any vocation, but especially the priesthood, never let fear stop you. We must face our fears and move past them. To those of you living your vocation already or discerning other things, we kindly ask that you pray for vocations, all vocations, of course, but especially for men to the priesthood. Prayer should never, ever be underestimated in its importance. It is the most important thing Jesus asks us to do. 
praying for men to step forward will work. I can assure you that it will, and it already very much is. May God bless you. My dear friends, join us now in the prayer of the faithful. The season of Easter is a time of thanksgiving and joy. In gratitude, we ask our Lord and our loving God to hear and answer our prayers. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Cardinal Collins, and all the bishops, through their vocation, may they teach us, lead us, and bring us closer to Jesus. For this, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and suffering, the hungry and the lonely, that the light of Christ may shine into the darkness and bring about healing, we pray to the Lord. And for all of those in our daily TV Mass community, and for those here at Loretta Abbey, that we may find and be strengthened in our own vocation, we pray to the Lord. Kind and living God, hear the answer of the prayers we bring before you this day and those that remain in the silence of our heart. And we make all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Thank you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Thank you. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. 
Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not worthy, worthy that you should enter into my room. But only say the word, and my soul, soul shall be healed. Will those of you at home please join me now in this prayer from sacred scripture. Jeremiah 29. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details.